uh, dear colleague and friends and uh, uh, comrade, wherever you are, whenever you are in any part of the world, it was good morning or good evening, good afternoon, Australia, New Zealand, America, Canada, South Africa, whatever you call it. Say good morning, good afternoon, good day for you, as well as Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we are talking about the episode 25 of the series called Fadfada, which we started last year. I need to thank my colleague Aya Abu Zainab for making the presentation, the slideshow, and also Hajar Ali as well for helping me. And today we're talking about who is the traitor to his own country? Who is the traitor to his own country or to her own country? It is a difficult subject, as we all know, for many reasons. Why I'm talking about this issue at this point in time and at this slippery turning point in the history of humanity. It's very difficult, very difficult. You have seen my drawing, which are both three images, and they'll explain it later on. I have 11 reasons of talking about the one who is traitor to his own country or her own country. Number one, why, why, why is happening? Why I'm talking about it today? Because we live in this time, because we live in the time where the honest is disbelieved and the liar is believed. The honest is disbelieved and the liar is believed. That's number one. The halal, which is the lawful, and the lawful is forbidden. The halal and the lawful is forbidden, and lawful. And the forbidden is permitted. This is what we are surrounding ourselves with this philosophy of thinking, a new culture. The halal and the lawful is forbidden, and the forbidden is permitted. The disgrace is commanded, the disgrace is commanded while the goodness is condemned. The disgrace is commanded while the goodness is condemned. The corrupt is respected while the guided individual like all of you or most of you is despised. The tyrants are being glorified or the tyrants are glorified, while the reformers are disdained. The tyrants are glorified and the reformers are disdained. The ignorance leads, ignorance leads, while the knowledgeable hides away. The fool speaks, while the wise men and women like you are silent. The mob is followed by the masses. While the wise are silent, while the worthy is isolated, sorry. The mob is followed while the worthy is isolated. The honorable, the honorable, the honorable are imprisoned detained while the wicked are unleashed. The young grow old and the old grow childish. All people at the age of 80 and 70 and 90 still behaving like teenagers. The indecency is, dig is dignified. The indecency is dignified and the honorable is slandered. The guided are lost and the wolves are ready for feast. These 11 points made me to talk about who is the traitor for the country, to its own country or our country. Because this is, the, uh, this is the time and this is the philosophy of life that we are surrounding us at the moment. Welcome Sister Abir Soda from uh, Lebanon. 
Welcome, Brother Adam Ez Din from Chad. Welcome, Brother Jangir Malik from UK. There's many, many definitions for betrayal. Betrayal is one of the ugliest, one of the ugliest traits that a person can have. One of the ugliest traits that a person can have as it contradicts good morals, education, responsibility, and religion as well. It contradicts all this and more. It's considered a breach of the existing agreements between one party and another party. This is defined by Feda Abu Hassan 2015. Feda Abu Hassan 2015. But there also is violation or breach of a presumed covenant of honesty or trust that produces psychological conflict and relationships between individuals and between organizations or between individuals and organizations. Means violation or breach of covenant. This is the second definition of betrayal. The third definition of betrayal, it occurs when a competitor fails to support or breaks prearranged or supposed rules. This is answer. I promise somebody, then I fail to support him or her. This is betrayal. In psychology, Roger uh, Jackson, 2072-73 said betrayal is breaking the social contract. When you break any social contract with your employees, with your colleague, with your family, with your neighbors, with your country, with your organization, with your ministry, you are betraying this institution and this community. As Roger Jackson is mentioned. I've got the image which have seen it, which you must have seen it on the Facebook before. The three faces, the middle one, which is a nice, beautiful individual, could be a male, could be a female, looks like an angel, come to the people in a very angelical way, but has got two other images, look like a devil, because that's why he or she plans in secret or behind our backs. So any traitor, any traitor has got more than one face to deal with the community, to deal with the public, to deal with his colleague, even to deal with his family, as the image on the Facebook is. And I will send the link later on. Some more. What did Islam say about betrayal in the Quran? In religion, Allah in Surah Al-Anfal, Anfal 27, betrayal, betray your trust while you know the consequences. This is the mention betray, betray. But if we want to carry on reading to the end of the verse, we can do so. It is Al-Anfal verse 27. In finance, also in Quran, and we and do not and do not be for the deceitful an advocate. Do not be an advocate for the deceitful. This is what Allah said in Surah An Nisa, 105. In Sharia, ah, but if they intend to betray you, then they have already betrayed Allah before. And this is Al-Anfal again, 71. Al-Anfal, 71. And it means if they abandoned or blocked honesty in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu okay, they have abandoned it in the Fard as well. So whoever dropped the Sunnah, dropped the Fard. 
in adultery in Surah Yusuf 52, and that Allah does not guide the plan of betrayers. Allah does not guide the plan of the betrayers, the people who betray their community, their society, their country, their organization. Surah Yusuf. In breach of covenant, Surah Al Anfal again, verse 58. If you have reason for fear from a people betrayer, throw their treaty back to them, putting you on equal terms. Indeed, Allah does not like traitors. This is in Al Anfal. Uh, 58. So Quran talked about betrayal, about khiana, about khain and khaina, male and female uh, traitors. In Sunnah, Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Prophet Sallallahu said, whosoever possesses these four characteristics, is a sheer hypocrite. And anyone who possesses one of them possesses a characteristic of hypocrisy. Say it again. Whosoever possesses these four characteristics is a sheer hypocrite. And anyone who possesses one of them possesses a characteristic of hypocrisy tell he gives he or she gives it up who are what are the four characteristics number one when he or she is entrusted with something he or she proves dishonest yeah, but dishonesty is number one number two when he or she speaks he or she tell lies this number two Number three, when he or she makes a covenant, he or she proves treacherous, betraying people. Number three, and when he quarrels or she quarrels, he or she behaves in a very imprudent, evil, insulting manner. And this is the four characteristic of hypocrisy. Al-Bukhari 34 and Muslim 85. Another hadith of the Prophet he said, Abu Hurayyah, may Allah be pleased with him, reported the message of Allah SWT used to supplicate, make prayer, prayer, dua, and say, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from what? From hunger, hunger. Surely it is the worst companion because it goes with me to bed, it goes with me to, 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 to the office, to the work, to the street. Go with, hunger goes with me everywhere. It is the worst companion. And I seek refuge in you, Allah, from treachery to betray my people, my community, my family, everyone. Dawood, Abu Dawood. 1485. Welcome, uh, Mr. Fadi Aitani, who is the CEO of Muslim Chats Forum. On the authority of Jabir, who said, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbid that a man should come to his family like an unexpected visitor at night, doubting their fidelity and spying into their lapses. And don't spy on your wife and your children when you come in the evening. Just tell them what time you are coming and they'll be prepared to meet you and prepare the house for you. Don't mistrust your family and your children. Why in my discussion with you today, I concentrate on the leaders? or the person in charge. The leader could be a president, could be a king, could be a minister, could be a prime minister, could be head of organization, could be a teacher, could be a headmaster, could be a professor, could be anybody in charge. Why? 
because these leaders and managers overtake all these powers which I'm going to mention to you. Executive power, the power of literary, societal power, cultural power, intellectual power, philosophical power, directive power, power of direction, educational power, ethical and oversight power, protection and security, training and rehabilitation, empowerment and preparation of generation, spending, uh, spending and the economy, development and investment. Because the leader or the man in charge or the woman in charge have all this authority in his or her hand. That's why you have to focus on such kind of leadership, whether it's a father, the head of, uh, of the family, or a president or a king. How a leader becomes a traitor. I have 17 points. It's easy to read, difficult to comprehend. First of all, the point one is affiliation. Look at your leader or our leader. Who are they are affiliated themselves to? Are they affiliating themselves to their own community, to their own nation, to their own country, or somebody else, or somewhere else? They're a part of a different establishment, and they are not a part of your own country. Their loyalty is not for your own country or your community or your organization. Philosophy. Do they have the same philosophy of thinking of the community surrounding them and entrusting them, or they are thinking in, a, in, in another uh, philosophical way like other people who are not a part of this country? It, if they do that, that means that they could be divide, could be a tool of dividing the community because they are bringing something which is that the community does not understand. Religion, faith, and belief. Are they a part of your religion? Faith and belief, and they are committed to it, or they are hiding another religion in themselves or faith and belief. And they are believing in something which the community does not believe in. And portraying themselves as good believer of the religion of the, of, of, of the community. The culture, which is number four, I said 17 points. Do they accept the local culture or do they always bring dubious culture to divide and fragment uh, the community and the country? And their thought and intellect, is their thought is homemade, reflecting the needs, reflecting the aspiration reflecting the dreams of the public of his or her own country, or it's reflecting some other culture and some other intellect as well. History, are they preserving the right history or they are changing the history, making the criminals a hero and the heroine and the hero and, her, and, and the, making, the, making the, uh, the honest hero and heroine and uh, the honest uh, criminal and the criminal uh, 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 honest people. Like actually, you keep changing, writing, or re rewriting the history, as, as they call it in the proverb, in the Arabic proverb, the victorious army or the victoria, victorious people are changing the history of the state. Are they tra training uh, the people, empowering the people, helping the people, rehabilitating the people, and or what? If they are not, they are betraying the local community because they want them to be depending on them 24-7. In education, are they spending money, the money of the people on education? to get them out from the level of ignorance to the level of literacy, or they would love to keep them as ignorant, idiot, do not know what's happening in the surrounding. In the 
archaeology are they smuggling and selling these very ancient monuments for gaining selling it to people in the black market or they are keeping it as a national heritage in freedom and oppression are they giving freedom to every citizen and letting every citizen to have civil liberty space so the organizations and the individuals can enjoy or they are clamping down the civil liberty of any individual in the country look at this to know if he is betraying you or she is betraying you and the community or not are they building community building and development are they developing your community they might be in office for 30 or 40 years like we've seen a lot of presidents and others running their countries for 30 and 40 years and the development and the community building as a movie in the 40s and 50s gone with the wind and the development gone with the wind nothing been done a lot of ingo when they interfere in a poverty stricken area they do not raise them to the level of empowerment and independence i had this discussion with one of my young colleagues from an arab country when i was talking to him about what does it mean to be development he said but actually all the ingo of my country are not telling that they are stopping us far away from what you're talking about because some of them don't want to develop you are they developing the future generation the young people investing in the young people making the young leadership while they are still in office or not if they are not they are betraying the country they are betraying the community they are betraying the, the, the society and they are betraying the citizens as well are they empowering the community for individuals uh, 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 individuals and institutions are they empowering them as i mentioned before or they keep these institutions and the individuals uh, uh, relying on dependency syndrome Oh, we're going to get the fund from somewhere else we're going to get this from somewhere else no are they doing this or not personalization if some opposition or some people have a different opinion they become subjective they become subjective not objective oh my god i don't listen to her because she is no she is not or he is no he is not listen to his opinion listen to opinion. their opinion could be the, the 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 best solution for the problem of the country their affiliation of your leaders is their affiliation to political party to their political party to jamaa or to their own groups various groups or to their own sect or clans or families or grouping are more important than their affiliation to their country itself the bigger society or not are they benefiting the masses or the common or they are benefiting the small group that they belong to and the last and not least the hadith of the prophet which means those who seek to become the leaders and do not or are not capable or qualified for the leadership what the hadith of the prophet said prophet sallam said when honesty is lost when honesty is lost then wait for the hour then wait for the hour They asked, how will honesty be lost? 
they couldn't be able to be companions couldn't be able to comprehend what does mean that the honesty will be lost amongst people because all the people surrounding the prophet sallallahu were very honest people he said to them when authority is given to those who do not deserve it then wait for the hour that means this is this honesty when you give authority to people who do not deserve it who are not capable for it wait for the hour when authority is given to those who do not deserve it then wait for the hour young people my message to you today is as you are conscious aware active aspirant to building a better future and a better life for the children in your country and the children of humanity i know that this is what you want to do we must understand that let me put this as earrings in your ears what that we the callers do not betray anyone and you should not betray anyone we do not doubt anyone and you should not doubt anyone we do not backbite anyone and you should not backbite anyone we do not waste anyone's rights and you should not waste anyone's right as well we do not expose anyone or be unjust to anyone and you should not expose anyone or to be unjust to anyone this is principles moral principles for you young people before we start making you community leaders however you and me or we all together we want to investigate the truth so we have to be careful and follow unbiased policies that do not differentiate between citizens due to what no differentiation no distinction between a and b and c in the society based on ethnicity gender intellectual capability philosophical culture ideological political background nationalities historical differences or foreign civilization and religions don't differentiate if some newcomer to your country are there and they're coming from different culture, different civilization, different religions, accept them as human being. They, will be, they, be, they could become added value to the fabric or to the social fabric of your own society. Be unbiased. To achieve all these young people, we need to walk and progress through what through a triangular path triangular like triangle triangular path knowledge is its space awareness is its strength consciousness is it is summit knowledge awareness and consciousness without them you cannot bring justice to any community knowledge awareness and consciousness knowledge awareness and consciousness what do you mean by knowledge what is knowledge what knowledge means education and learning there's a big difference between somebody teaching you or you are seeking the knowledge by having this positive energetic dynamic action to learn you yourself to go out seeking how to learn how to be educated not just you are forced to go to school and you don't like to go to school knowledge is reading and extrapolation not only reading once you read you have to understand then you have to comprehend 
utilize and 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 don't stop at reading don't stop at reading this is the knowledge examining and concluding when you examine something you have to have a conclusion afterwards you just don't be like those people who become a shadow in the community have no weight and no impact on the community knowledge also is culture and becoming culture understanding the culture becoming culture and teaching the culture to different societies education and learning reading and extrapolation examining and concluding examining and concluding no so examining and concluding culture and becoming culture this is this is my understanding of the meaning of knowledge and this is the this is the basis or this is the base of the pyramid, the triangular pyramid, the triangle, the triangular pyramid, which has got knowledge, awareness, and consciousness. So first, knowledge. Awareness. What's awareness? It is the concept with it is a concept with a tangible connection. Tangible. You can hold it, you can see it, you can hear it, you can smell it, you can sense it. It is a concept with a tangible connection, which has a connection with physical expression. As I said, seeing, hearing, touching, feeling, smelling, tangible physical expression. For example, you are aware of the fact that consuming an excessive amount of sugar or carbohydrates may lead to obesity, diabetes, and other diseases. It's true, everybody knows that. Or that any choice you make or any action you take may have a profound impact on the lives of your loved ones. This kind of things, which you can actually, yes, this action might lead to the death of my daughter. No, it's dangerous now, it's snowing, it's dangerous. It's actually raining heavily, it's dangerous. It's actually the lot of wolves in, in, on the road and so on. In other, in other words, you are aware of these facts due to several factors that are possible and existing. Existing that you can touch it, can see it, can feel it. Such as feelings, perceptions, cognitive abilities, and even knowledge itself. In other words, you know and understand what it is. This is the awareness. You know it. The idrak, the Arabic idrak. But you do not know exactly how it may or may not be related to your life. Yani, extra fat, I mean, extra carbohydrate means obesity and diabetes and maybe something else. Being aware does not necessarily correspond to or equal. Uh, to what it means to be conscious. Being aware is the level or the degree before becoming conscious, fully conscious. Because awareness is having some tangible things in your hand, some physical expression, and actually which you can feel it itself. This is awareness, which is one of the three uh, lines of the pyramid or the triangle. The third one is consciousness you have on the knowledge on the awareness and we say consciousness being conscious is hugely connected with the state of being spiritual what does it mean because it implies that degree of awareness here the level of awareness is rising high and making you becoming conscious. Don't sleep. Thinking, thinking, because you can see if it goes to A, it become B, it go to B, it become C, it go to C, it become D, and so on. So, and you keep putting the milestones to what is after having this heavy meal. So I know that I become fat man, and I know that I might have diabetes. So what is the consequences later on? 
being conscious is hugely connected with the state of being spiritual because it symbolizes that degree of awareness where the physical world becomes unobstructed by the limits of your understanding where the physical world become un becomes un un unobstructed by the limits of our understanding or your understanding to be conscious is to be aware of the metaphysical what to call it in arabic metaphysica of the metaphysical world there's physical world and metaphysical world be con to be conscious is to be aware of the metaphysical world where interactions and learning take the place of physical cognitive experiences being to be conscious is to be aware of the metaphysical world where interactions and learning take the place of physical cognitive experiences so being in a state of consciousness is more profound and expansive which not expensive expansive than being in a state of awareness but consciousness is a higher level knowledge is the base pillar is awareness consciousness is a summit so being in a state of consciousness is more profound and expansive than being in a state of awareness perception is conditioned to be conscious uh, to uh, to be before conscious perception is conditioned to be before consciousness yani once your awareness level is higher your perception will be actually expecting what it going to happen later on you cannot be something if you are not aware of it first you cannot be i tell you you cannot be a doctor or a president or a professor or a teacher or a or a farmer or a mechanic or an engineer unless you go maybe to school then you go to university then you go after you, after you finish the university to have a lot of experience then you become a professor or you go to this path then you go to social work political party to become a president or to become a prime minister or to become a minister it has to have this kind of path you cannot be something if you are not aware of it first you want to be a president there's a track you want to be a professor there's a track you want to be a teacher there's a track you want to be a doctor there's a track and so on how does knowledge affect your awareness and consciousness how does knowledge affect your awareness and consciousness this is mentioned by uh, the spirit of wisdom uh, global wisdom 24 january 2018 as been said knowledge is a power and now what you can see the knowledge obtained by the social media platforms such as google uh, facebook and others all this they have the knowledge they have the data the basic 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 structure of the knowledge is the raw material of data that will provide this organization to have from us so knowledge is power are we going to compare the people who know the knowledge to the people who do not know the knowledge the people who know the knowledge will be aware and conscious more aware and more conscious than the people who do not know the knowledge who are unaware and unconscious that's why if some leaders as we can see it nowadays make their community or the nation put them on this komato 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 coma state an unconscious state they can do anything they want 
they can do anything they want. And that's what's happening now. By spending less money on education, spending on, on uh, less money on capacity building of the local individual local organization, spending on, uh, less money on awareness, uh, spending on, less money on uh, uh, raising the consciousness of the people. Knowledge is power because it is the starting point for an what awareness revolution. You cannot have an awareness revolution unless you have the knowledge. It is the beginning of consciousness and awareness. A knowledge is the beginning of consciousness and awareness. And knowledge is very much needed for the awareness revolution. Knowledge makes you aware of facts. Facts on one side, then your reality on another side. Yes, I know that, but really I don't have, I cannot do it. And reality, I cannot do it. So it shows you the facts and shows you your own reality as well. Knowledge makes you aware of facts and of or your own reality. And in return, this awareness makes you conscious from awareness level to conscious level of your higher goals and nothing happens without a reason. Once we are aware and become conscious, the state of consciousness of us will take us to the higher goal that we're trying to achieve. But it goes by knowledge, awareness, consciousness. Knowledge, awareness, consciousness. And when you begin, all of us, young people, and when you begin to question and doubt, when you start the questioning and doubting about the facts and the possibilities of your reality, huh? that is the moment when you have become truly conscious. If you are not conscious, you will not ask, you will not doubt. You will not question. But if you start to ask, to doubt, discuss, that means that your higher expectation goals would be achieved because you are moving from the state of awareness to the state of consciousness. This is the spirit of wisdom, the global spirit of wisdom, or the universal spirit of wisdom, or Ruh al-Hikmah al-Kawniya, 24th January 2018. How does knowledge affect your awareness and consciousness? Again, the same one. Yeah, same. The cognitive knowledge is the foundation for cognitive jurisprudence, okay? Directing the path of knowledge. The cognitive knowledge is the foundation for cognitive jurisprudence, directing the path of knowledge. It is the firm foundation of the awareness that creates societal consciousness, awareness, and the philosophy of the orbits of its merits. This is knowledge. No awareness, no consciousness without awareness. So without knowledge, no awareness, no consciousness without awareness, without knowledge. No awareness, no consciousness without knowledge. No path will be all over the place. This takes us back to the root of the conscious perceptual knowledge. Conscious perceptual knowledge as the first word was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what, what, what was it? Read. It does not mean the literal meaning of read and write. No, it didn't mean the literal meaning of read and write because Jabril knew 
that Muhammad Sallallahu did not know how to read or write. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I cannot read. So why, he, why the first, first word in the Quran was read? It was about, not about it, but inclusion, perceptive, and productive knowledge of societal awareness. Say it again, it was not about read and write, it's about inclusion, perceptive, and productive knowledge of societal awareness. It was about the knowledge, the awareness itself. Hence, if we would, Hence, if we would like to hold traitors and tyrants accountable, we must walk and progress inside this, this path, which is built with the triangular dimensions to achieve the required community justice, which is the dream of the young people in the South. By the way, it has to be just. Uh, society. Okay. At this point, we remember the story of the Qarnid. When we went to the far west of the globe and to this Al-Ain al this area, and found people there did not know God did not worship Allah, God. And someone told them, why don't you punish them? I said, no, no, no. We cannot punish anybody without uh, reasoning, without asking, without examination, without investigation. He found them that they are doing good, will bless their work. He found that they are doing bad, bad will punish them, then Allah will uh, punish them later on. So, so, hence, if we would like to hold traitors and tyrants accountable, this is us. We have to walk. We must walk and progress inside this path, which is built with the triangular dimension of knowledge, awareness, and consciousness to achieve the required community justice. What we can see nowadays is unjust behavior of certain groups or certain rulers, or certain governments. Required community justice, which is the dream of the young people in the societies. We must know and have the clear, we must know and have the clear awareness and knowledge before passing judgment on these tyrants. So people in the society won't be surprised by them. And you just don't go because you have made a revolution and you make a change and you cut the throat of everyone. No, no, no. It's wrong. It's not us. We have to both make people accountable to justice. Let justice prevail and let it be independent, not to be biased. Before I conclude, I would like to remind us, I've been hearing something which could be uh, what's happening in Ukraine, which is could be uh, very alarming, very alarming, very alarming, very alarming in, 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 in Ukraine. Somebody might say that Ukraine is not a Muslim country, but what, why, why you are, uh, I'm alarmed by anything happening to any human being, to a human being, whether they're Muslim or not Muslim, in this area. Then Bosnia, something also is happening in Bosnia, because Bosnia for the last few years is on hot plate inside burning, boiling pot. And this is another spot. So Ukraine in east of Europe, no, in, 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 uh, uh, yeah, in, yeah, near, near, near Russia, okay, and Bosnia in the Balkan. I'm very alarmed to why it might, why, why it, what might be happening to them. I'm not talking, talking about Afghanistan because Afghanistan is all over the place, uh, the news. But Bosnia is not 
on the news. The third one, which I'm very alarmed by, is Uyghur in China, in the concentration camps. The fourth one, which is uh, what's happening to Rohingya refugees camps every now and then, fire, fire, fire in the camps. More than one million people. Those Rohingya people are suffering not only for the last seven or eight or nine years, but I was introduced to the problem of the Rohingya from Arakan since the 80s. And it was there happening, ethnic cleansing before that. So the, the, the last but not least, look at the Democratic Republic of Congo, try to support the local community as well. Look at the Central African Republic, trying to support the local government and community as well as the displaced and refugees came out from there and others as well. That's why I'm alarmed at the beginning of the 2022, putting all this fear to what might happen to these areas, actually, whether they are in a Muslim major, majority area, uh, population or a non-Muslim majority population. I take uh, this uh, opportunity to thank all of you today on Friday, and I wish you again and again and again happy and prosperous and tranquil and peaceful your year. I hope it will become far more better than and peaceful and stable than 2021. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you, inshallah, afterwards, the next meeting, next talk, inshallah.